The time has come that I'm actually putting the kit box up for sale. I don't really want to, but as probably most of you guys know, I work overseas in Papua New Guinea and I'm heading back over there in a couple of months for three years. And I don't really want to store this for three years. So I'm giving an opportunity to one of you guys or somebody else to pick it up and have a lot of fun. And who knows, I might get a plane when I get back. I honestly don't know. But I'm gonna walk through the plane for you guys that might be interested in just knowing about the airplane. Or if you actually are interested in maybe buying the airplane, you'll get a close up look at everything that I can show you and everything that I know about the plane. We're gonna start at the front, work our way to the back, and I'm gonna break up the video down below into sections. So if you wanna like skip around, see a different section, watch it again, it'll be a little bit easier for you to navigate through that. So let's just start right up here at the front with the engine. It's got around 230 hours, 223.6 today but I'm going on a flight this week. Probably one of my closest to last ones and maybe camping again, but 230 hours total time on the engine as well as the airframe. So it's a 2011 Kit Fox Series 5 with the standard wing, the Rotax 912 ULS, 100 horsepower engine, non-turbo, naturally aspirated. So let me just do some quick close-ups of the engine for you guys. So nothing really special has been done. I know that there has been some mods and stuff up here because I guess hot starting and things like that, I guess. I really don't know that much about the engine. So it's just a standard Rotax engine. And yeah, there's really not much to show you. I don't have any oil leaks anywhere on any of the gaskets, no oil leaks. The prop is, let me come over here. I don't remember the length on it. It might be in the log books, which is another thing. This plane has very good logs. It was built by a professional builder. I'd say build quality, 10 out of 10. Been an AMP, and I've worked as an AMP for about three and a half years. And just overall, the airplane, the quality of his work, I mean, it is top notch. It looks like a factory build airplane, 100%. From what I was told, this was his 14th airplane that he built. He works for Land. He worked for Landsair before he built this. He built another one of his own, and then he built this. Flew it for around 80 hours, and then sold it. Previous buyer only flew it for a few hours. I picked it up around 130 hours, and since I've put on only 100 hours uh, since last October, so six to seven months, 100 hours, really not that much. But I have done a lot of work and a lot of mods to it. One of the unique features about this very specific airplane that is very unique to itself, unlike any other Kit Fox, is how the cowling goes on. Because the guy worked for Lancer, that's how they put their like, piano hinges right here. So it's a really nice, clean look. Let me go ahead and put it on for you guys so you can see. All right, so now you can see what I'm talking about. It's a nice, clean look. You don't have all these attachments like this all the way down the side vibrating and wearing out your fiberglass. It's a nice clean look over top as well. As well as like the oil cap, it's a nice smooth look. So these, what I've been told are from a Vans aircraft. He also made a Vans. Um, and then yeah, this is just a full custom front end. And it's nice because this is like the nice smooth Kit Fox 7 look instead of the old kind of round radial kind of look that the fives typically came with. All right, let's move on to the wheels. Airstreak 29 inch bush wheels, uh, standard wheels and brakes, Cleveland one puck brakes and discs and they're all good. I did the condition inspection last October, so it's good until this October, so another six or so months. Tires only have 
less than 100 hours on them and most of that is from dirt landings and stuff so there's still a ton of life in those those i think were like 3500 bucks so not cheap it's got a backup cam which i still need to plug back in and that is right down here it just flips down right here and then you can flip it on with a camera switch right there you can see it comes on the only thing with that is it's a flip-flopped image. Now, that's an easy fix by just changing out the camera to a different one. Typically, they'll come with like three wires that you can cut to flip it. This one particularly does not. I tried cutting all the wires and it still didn't do it. So, but it's a nice feature when you're off airport, either taxiing around, you don't want to run over a bush and hit it with your prop or something like that. That's a really handy tool to have. All right, just going on the gear. This is just the standard Kit Fox spring gear nothing special about it it does work well if you have a nice smooth landing it's pretty good if you start kind of having a really kind of rough landing you'll balance things like that but i just didn't think it was worth another five grand to upgrade the gear especially if i only well originally i was planning on keeping this wasn't planning on selling it so eventually that was not my thing to do but i just wanted to go out and use it all right up next is the VG kit right here, I installed those up there as well as on the back of my horizontal stabilizer. I did a video on the install. It slowed it down the stall speed. Power on, I think by six knots, I think is what it was. It did help. I felt like it made my power on stall a little bit more aggressive. Overall, it did, it did allow me to go in a little bit slower. I think on my approach speed is 53 miles an hour is 1.3 VSO. That's slow enough for just about anything you're coming in on. Pro LED strobes, position, and navs. So uh, let me flip these on real quick. There you go. Now you can see nav, strobes, position, and they're all linked with the one on the tail as well. So they all, like both wings and the tail, all flash at the same time. And then you can see you've got your position and strobes in the back. And then the same on this side here. So there you can also see the wigwag function going back and forth. And then you can also just keep both of them on at the same time, just with your landing light. And then here you have your wigwag, just your landing, your navs, and then your strobe lights I kept on the original switch down here. So that upgrade alone took me a while to install because I wanted it to be professional. I wanted it to look stock. And I'm really glad that I went with those because the landing is, they're amazing. I mean, really they light up the runway so well. I did have the operating limitations as well changed on this airplane. So now it is legal to go day and night VFR with this plane. Like I said earlier, this is just the standard wing. There's nothing special about it. Um, it does have like the flat end plates. I know that some other ones have more of like the caps, kind of like this to do the wing extensions. Doesn't have that, but it flies well. It's very responsive, especially with the flapperons. The whole surface is your ailerons, but then also their flaps as they go down. If you want more information, just go Google it and you'll get your answer on exactly why they did that and how, how that all works. All right, everything is just push-pull tubes except for the rudder pedals going all the way back. You can see right out the back, there's a little cable at the bottom and that is for your rudder. Coming in here, let's see, I replaced these from Bow and Arrow LE or LLC as well as these little door things. You can lock the door or you can have kind of AC mode where they lock open about an inch. That is a very, very handy thing to have. Uh, I redid the interior. I do have more carpet. I still have more Alcantara um, to give whoever buys it if they want to replace some stuff, use them as templates. Uh, I made the, the door cards. I covered the whole inside with like a soundproofing material, covered this with the nicest carbon fiber wrap that I could possibly find that looks really realistic. I was gonna do the instrument panel, but I just ran out of time, honestly. But I do have enough to cover this all up. This is a TSEFS. Um, I honestly don't know that much about it, but I do have all of the books. I have all the manuals, all the build logs. I have every build, everything on this airplane. 
the guy who did it really kept really good logbooks, so it's really handy that he has all the original paperwork for everything on this airplane. But it does come with autopilot, two axis autopilot, so it will hold your heading, it will also hold your altitude, and it will also, it's connected with the Garmin 496, which is out of date, but it still has a lot of stuff in there. You can actually fly like a nav nav where you're um, a nav GPS steer, so it will actually follow your track that you have set up in here. You can see this little switch right here, and it has holes up here for defroster. They're little, like tiny little computer fans. That works pretty well. I've used that a few times early in the morning. I do have a fuel flow, I think it's a transducer. I've not installed it into the plane, but you can link it to where it basically does your fuel burn as you're flying, so you'll know exactly how much fuel burn you are using. What I've found, it's around 4.9 to five gallons an hour. So I just use five. So it's around 25 bucks an hour to fly this thing. Really cheap and affordable. Definitely a lot of fun for your buck. So coming over, this is just for your radio. Your camera switch is down under here. I have it hooked up just to the hard battery. So you don't have to be on your battery masters on. This is for your interior lights and it's on rheostat. You got red LEDs under here as well as on each side up here. And then like I said, you can dim them down. Here's your wigwag, your landing lights, your nav lights, your autopilot, and then you can switch to a different view right here and have just a little bit more on your engine. 496 does come out, but like I said, it's all linked in here with your Jeep or with your autopilot. This is ICOM A210. Nothing special about that. Nothing special about the transponder. And then we have another redundancy thing here. It'll show your feet per minute climber descent. These are the ones I put in over here for the landing lights. Oh, this is a kind of a cool feature about Kit Foxes. You can actually adjust your rudder pedals nice and close to you if you're short or if you're tall. I usually have it just one click back. Here's your trim indicator. Let's adjust the trim. That's your fuel pump. This is your flaps. So as you go all the way full flaps, let me show you out here what I'm talking about. There you go. See, that's the flap. And then also, that's the aileron. Back here, I've got fuel shutoffs on both sides which is really nice to be able to even out your fuel tanks. Typically, I see that it burns typically a little bit more on the right. I think that's just because it's just a tiny bit uncoordinated. I did install a trim tab on the rudder, but it needs to be just a tiny bit bigger, unless you just want to put your foot on the rudder the whole time, just a tiny bit. So what I do is I just turn one of them off. That evens it out really well. Underneath this seat here, you're just Velcroed where all the paperwork, things like that are. I'm trying to think of anything else in here that you guys would like to see. We've got storage compartment here and here and all back here. I haven't cleaned it out yet. All right, so if you're interested in just like weight and balance, what can you carry with this? It's a 1550 um, max gross. So basically fuel or full fuel, two adults, 180 max, 200 pounds, I think-ish. And then a hundred pounds of cargo back here. Now, you're probably not gonna be able to get a hundred pounds back there. I've gone camping with this once and it was very tight, but at least for weight and balance, that's kind of what it is. Fuel tanks, 13 gallons a side, so 26 gallons, so around five hours of flying time. I did install these little sunshade things. They work, eh, okay, not amazing. But without them and without having a hat, it does get a little warm in there in summer days. Coming around to the back right here, this is kind of a cool feature that not all kit foxes have. Um, take out these cam locks, this folds up and then folds up again, making it really easy to be able to load back here. That's a really nice feature. Overall like paint condition of the airplane, I would say, I mean, it's it's nice paint. It's kind of like a, a satin look, so it's not a glossy paint. It never really was. Um, I would say the quality of it, well, the original guy painted the blue lines on. The previous owner painted the red on. I don't think that the red was painted on maybe quite uh, 
as nice a quality as the rest of the plane. Overall, I'd say it's a seven to eight out of 10 paint. There's a couple little imperfections here and there for sure. But as far as the white paint goes and everything like that, it's just, it looks, it's just a nice plane, but it's not any show airplane. You know what I mean? There are a couple little things like this where it looks like hanger rash or something where they might've hit something and scraped it up. So they covered it up. And then I think, oh, there was one like right here. This is when they fold the wings back and it touches back there. So if you don't have something to protect it, if you're storing it like that, um, if you are considering buying this, I highly recommend flying at home. Do not trailer at home. I know someone that's trailered it and they destroyed the actual frame. It actually bent it on just like a four or five hour ride. Uh, I've talked to Kit Fox uh, manufacturers. They said, don't do it. Uh, so I, I would recommend anybody that does consider buying this flying at home. I also would consider maybe getting some instruction maybe somewhere else. There are people that do construction or instruction on kit foxes specifically. And I myself had to get 10 hours in the kit fox before I could get insured. And I really did, really did appreciate getting the instruction because it's a very touchy airplane. It's very light. It's only like 800 pounds. So it's a very touchy airplane and it can get a little squirrely on you until you get used to how much control movement you actually need to put in. All right, let me just walk around as far as like kind of close up of everything for wings and just the overall really kind of condition of the paint and fabric work. I think the guy that did the fabric work did an absolute phenomenal job, really clean and just professional work. It was not his first job for sure. Uh, and even just like body work and stuff. You know, he did a really good job at what he was doing. He really took a lot of pride in his work. Um, yeah, overall, I mean, it looks pretty nice. There's one spot right here that was touched up. And then underneath, there's one area that was repaired. It was, it was just cut. That was when I bought it and we, they had, I had it fixed right then and there. I have no idea how it happened. It wasn't me, it wasn't even before I flew it, but that's been fixed and hasn't had any problems in the past 100 hours of flying. Uh, yeah, overall, like the condition of the wings are just really nice. I mean, like I said, the paint, it's not shiny, uh, but there's just a couple of imperfections where, again, on this side rubbed, or, you know, rubbed on something there. But overall, I haven't also lost any VGs, the Vortex generators at all. Coming back here, if you're wondering how they got the end number, if you look that up, it was in a plane that wasn't a wreck. I think it was a Lance Air, though. His name was Keefton Black, I think. So that's why he they basically deregistered the other plane and re-registered this airplane. So if you look that up, you can see this little thing right here. This is just the trim. The whole elevator comes up and down for the trim. I installed this uh, just vinyl tape. I have more of it, so you can do it again. Basically, I put it on so sticks, rocks can't come up through here, and also, it in theory, is supposed to help the, the air going over the surfaces to remain on there rather than going through here and potentially losing some above. Rudder, I have this rudder lock that I built on both sides because it's very windy here, and that way it's not bashing against. That's what happened over here before I had it. This was up and the wind pushed it and it actually broke the rod end. I'd replaced, I replaced all the rod ends on it and made that, lesson learned. This is a Tundra light tail wheel. I do have right here, it's a lock, lockable tail wheel. I have not installed it just because I ran out of time, but there's a little lever that you can run up into your interior and then lock it straight for like a crosswind takeoff or something. Four inches wide by 10 inches tall. This is the T3 suspension. I've used it now for a month or so, and it's been really good. I've just been really pleased with how smooth it is. Having the four inch tire, just last week I landed on a sandbar that was just sand. Actually, it was more of a wash, just pure sand, and it just glided over everything. So having it four inches wide, if you've seen any other videos of mine with the pizza cutter, yeah, this is 10 times better. Uh, yeah, you can see just a couple little things here. Just little nicks and stuff. Um, I think that's actually from the wings. When they come back here, they can 
hit on this. And yeah, uh, like I said at the beginning, it's a Series 5, a 2011. That's when uh, it was built. And I think that's about all I can think of sharing with you guys. If you have questions, I'll leave my email down below. I really don't want to just answer questions if they're just questions about kit foxes because I am actually really busy. And so if I don't email you back, that's probably why. But if you are genuinely interested in purchasing this thing, I am putting it up for sale now. 115,000 or best offer. You're definitely gonna have a lot of fun with this thing. I sure did. I hate selling it, but it's off airport ready. And yeah, I know someone out there is gonna have a lot of fun. So like I said, if you are interested, email me and we can connect through the phone if you actually are. But again, if you're really just wanting questions answered, things like that, man, please don't just email me because I am very busy. I'm getting ready to head back overseas and I've got a lot of things to do before then. So hope you guys enjoyed this. Nonetheless, if you're just interested in finding out something about the Kit Fox and seeing it up a little bit more close and in person. So thanks guys, see ya.